Welcome back. This week we are doing uh, a reading from 1 Timothy in the second chapter, reading as follows. Paul writes to Timothy, I urge then, first of all, the prayers, petitions, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. And a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. There are two things going on here, friends, just as we begin. The first is this. Paul is giving Timothy directions about how to be a preacher and a worship leader. That's really needful. I'll come back to that in a second. But the second thing is he's got to put his credentials out there because he's bitten off a chunk. Oh, has he ever. Going back to that first part. Nobody knows how to run church. That kind of sounds like where we are at the moment, actually. Because you see, with new technology, like I'm talking to you now, it has created a whole new way to do church. Well, in this day, in this time, in this place in the Middle East, nobody knew how to do church either because there was no Christian church. The best you could hope for would be the Jewish synagogue or temple. See, there were no mosques because there was no Muslim faith either. Now there were gods and shrines all over the place. That's a different story that has to do with Corinthians and the first and second letters and so forth. We'll do that another day. But nobody knows how to run church, so here's how you're going to run it. And boy, does he get tough in a hurry. It's like a lot of what Paul says. It's hard. He says, you got to pray for the people that you don't like. Like you have to, for instance, pray for kings and all those in authority. I got to pray for the Romans. Oh, I don't think so. You got to pray for the troops. For the military dictatorship. Oh, I don't think so. You have to pray for the conservatives, the liberals, the NDP. Oh, I don't think so because I'm not one of those parties. We got to pray for our leaders. Whether you like them or not is irrelevant. We got to pray for them. Because we have to take Jesus to everybody. Everybody. So everybody looks like this. Everybody is stopping for two minutes to talk to the person who's in the wheelchair with part of one leg missing, sitting on a street corner begging. We got to pray for the people who inhabit the Bissell Center. We got to pray for the people who inhabit the legislature day in and day out, whether they're people who help or whether they're actually elected officials. We've got to pray for them. We have to pray, and at this moment, this is really important because we've done this just recently. Our new king. We have to pray for those in authority. That can be a tall order. 
It really can. But we have to do that. Because what we need is God's direction. And in doing that then, we have put ourselves in a position where we ask God, we need help. Guide and direct those who are guiding and directing us. The second part of it is, I have to put my credentials out there because see, I'm outside the box. The early church was all Jewish people who converted to being followers of Jesus. So therefore, it was assumed that you were Jewish in your approach, in your thought, in the way you did everything. It would be Jewish when you came to church. Paul has said, not in your life. We got all these other people out there that we got to go to talk to about the love, the mercy, the salvation, the grace that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so you have to go talk to the Greeks and the Lebanese, and the Syrians, and the Afghanis. You got to go talk to the Soviets. You got to go talk to everybody. All the people about this salvation because it's too important to keep. So just because folks don't act the way you think they should, that doesn't mean it's wrong. We have to take it out there. And sometimes it opens discussions that just need to happen in that time, in that place, in that moment. A friend of mine who's an administrative assistant at a church in a city here in Canada I won't identify, got this phone call. Phone call said, from person who was unidentified, can I ask you a question? Sure. After having said who they were, what's your question? Um, I want to know this. How could a church turn us down? Well, there's an opener. An hour later, this woman got done witnessing and listening to the situation and was able to speak a word of grace and love and care into it. And she knew she'd gotten through to this person because she was thanked at the end of the conversation for listening. But number two, the person also said, now where are you guys located? And she gave her the description and the address of where they were. If we take time, if we take a moment, if we will simply stop long enough and pause long enough and breathe long enough, God says, I will send people to you who really, really need to know what you know as a person of faith. Oh, and by the way, if you have questions, get a hold of us. Not just me necessarily, but call, ask. There is nothing that we can't work on, deal with, whatever's going on. All you have to do is sit down at the keyboard, text message on your phone, pick up the phone and call. Now there's a strange thing my age is showing. Or, or even put a remark on a Sunday morning service in the chat. Whatever way you find us. If you have something that you need to ask, we are here and we are available. For this is how we work together, encouraging one another in the faith. As we are all working for the kingdom. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
We give you thanks for this day. And we ask, Lord, for a moment. Because our lives in North America, and especially in Canada, in Alberta, in Edmonton, they're so busy sometimes we don't remember to breathe. Or we sit for hours and don't remember to blink in front of our computers. Help us, Lord, to have a moment so that when there's a small interruption, we pay attention because you, Lord, are often in the interruptions of our lives with important things that need to be heard, said, and listened to in so many ways. Help us to have time, Lord. We ask, Lord, for your blessing upon everyone so that they know that there is help available, especially for those who are sitting in the darkness of their own souls. Let them know that the light of Christ is there also. And send us to be helpers to lead them to the light or show them the light if they have done. Be also, dear God, with those who have suffered any kind of wounding, physical, spiritual, of any kind, Lord, that they would know that there are those who have similar experiences and that they can talk to people who know what they know and are not afraid, but who will help and assist. Be with all who are suffering from calamities. We think, Lord, of the struggle they're having in Jasper at this point with lack of power that's going on and on because so much of what we do relies on electricity lord help the folks in jasper out with generators and other things to apply into that need dear god we ask also that you would renew all those who are suffering from hunger May they be fed, Lord. May food actually show up that they're fed in body as well as in soul. Now all this, Lord, you know that we need. Speak into that by your Holy Spirit. And now, Lord, we close these prayers with the prayer that Jesus told us to pray daily. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May God, our creator, be with you this day. May Jesus, who is our redeemer and salvation, be with you this day. And may the Holy Spirit bless you abundantly with strength and courage necessary for this day. Amen.